Welcome to another installment of Absolutely Ridiculous SUVs. Today's entry comes courtesy of Alfa Romeo. This is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadro Formaggio. And it's fast as fuck. Oh my God. Oh my God. What makes this shapely Italian big boned hatchback esque thing so quick? Well, there's a Ferrari derived 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine sitting in the snout. It makes 505 glorious horsepowers. I think it makes 443 pound feet of torque, and it is backed up by a ZF 8 speed gearbox with gigundo paddles behind a thin rimmed steering wheel. I really like the steering wheel. And the start button is on the steering wheel because race car. That exhaust is excellent. It is shouty, rumbly, poppy in all of the right ways. It's not over the top like a Jag F-Type. Even though I still like that, it is over the top. It is ridiculous. Here, it just fits the character of this insane car. We live in an era of crossover and SUV sports supremacy. It's wild, but I'm coming to embrace it. Five hundred and five horsepower will do that for you. Now this is sitting on the Alfa Romeo Giorgio platform, which is the same platform as the Giulia. So it's basically a Giulia. Let's lift it up a bit. It's easier to get in and out of maybe if you're older. It's not a ton of room in here. It feels a little bit tighter than my Mazda CX-5, but the seats up front are super comfortable. I have a baby seat back there because it fits, and if it fits, she sits. There's decent room in the rear hatch. It's, it's a compact crossover, let's be real here, but it is big on sport. That never gets old. That exhaust noise never gets old. Controlling all of the action is the Alfa Romeo DNA system, which is kind of cheesily named. A is the lamest setting that you're never gonna put it in. The throttle is supremely dulled. N is normal. D is, I, I mean, I don't know if it stands for dynamic, but it should because it livens things up a bit and then you can make a firmer suspension setting there or just pop it down to soft. D and then suspension back in soft is a good one, but if you twist the knob, there's a knob to select it. You twist that further to the right and you enter race. The immediate suspension damping setup in race is too stiff unless you are on a racetrack. It is far too stiff, but you push the button and you put it into mid and it is a very comfortable ride. It's stiff, but livable and enjoyable, frankly. So the most entertaining way to drive this is race and mid. Fine for daily driving is D and soft, soft D. No one wants a soft D. Race and mid is the way to go. And then throttle response is great. Exhaust is at its loudest. Go pedal, go. Fuck yeah. This car gets up to speed very quickly. I believe it's zero to 60 time is under four seconds. It's insanely fast. It has big, wide, fat old Pirelli tires at every corner and they're offset. It's not a square stance, it's 255 up front, 285 in the back. The brakes are fucking huge. You can outfit this with carbon ceramic brakes, in fact, which is totally unnecessary for a vehicle in this class. Now I do have to have a word about the brakes because the brakes take some getting used to. They are the most grabby in terms of initial bite of any vehicle I've tested. If you touch, if you breathe on that brake pad, you're braking. So if, when you have people in the car, it can be a little bit jarring at first. I guarantee it's something that you get used to. The brake modulation is something you have to get used to at some point when driving this vehicle. However, spending a week with it, it's tough. You, if you, it's very easy to use far too much braking force when you feel like you're using none at all. When you're at higher speeds and you need to clamp down, it's awesome. It is fantastic. You brake with confidence every time. I've never found a hint of fade either. But that initial grab it's grabby. And I always say I want more grab out of these pads and I'm getting it and now I'm like, well, maybe dial it back a bit. Just for general daily use. The non quadrifalusia version of this, it gets a 280 horsepower turbo four, I believe. I know it makes 280 horsepower. That sounds like a fun, entertaining daily driver out of a two liter. 
and it doesn't have as aggressive a, as a look as this one. You've got the vented hood up there. You can easily tell it with the tires and wheels and brakes and the, there's a little bit of an extra fender flare going on, especially out back. You can really see the fender flare. Then you've got the big exhaust, the rear diffuser, all that good stuff. On the inside, you've got red leather paired with carbon fiber. I mean, this thing is sports car supreme. It's, it's, a, it's a fat kid that grows up to be a linebacker in the NFL. He is faster than you, he is more powerful than you, and if you bully him, he will come back and destroy you. So you shouldn't bully people anyway, especially not an Alfa Romeo Stelvio. That makes no sense. Fucking go, I mean, uh, if, if, oof. jail speeds, jail speeds. Easily, quickly, jail speeds in a four-door, five-passenger motherfucking crossover. Is this as crazy as the Trackhawk? No. This is probably better in terms of being more finely tuned and more finely focused. This one starts at $82,000. Tons of money. Probably worth it. By comparison, the 707 horsepower having Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk starts at about $86,000 if you can find one at that price. Which one is better? I mean, I feel like on a racetrack, this one is going to be the sharper tool. The steering feel is just fantastic. It is far better than it has any right being. The brakes are insane. I mean, the, the Trackhawk is wildly fast. This thing is wildly fast. The Trackhawk is probably a little bit more silly, stupid fun because 707 horsepower is just batshit crazy. 505 horsepower is already insane. 707 just doesn't even make sense until you drive it. Then you just you turn into the Joker. You want to know how I got these scars? I drove a fucking Trackhawk for a week. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the reliability. Now I'm going to tell you, I've driven two Alfa Romeo press vehicles. I drove the Giulia Quadrifoglio, loved it, and I have now driven the Stelvio Quadrimalalio, and I and I love it. It's great. I've had no issues. I had one issue in the Julia and it was my fault and I forced it to do it because I was told if I did that, it would do it. So I wanted to see if I could replicate it. You try to do a brake stand with it and it doesn't like it and it gives you like a throttle error and then it went away eventually. This, zero issues. I flew back from the East Coast after spending the holidays there, picked this up at LAX, put my family in it and immediately got on the highway and I've been driving it for the rest of the week. This is actually the day it goes back and Again, zero issues. I know Alfa Romeo owners are quick to point out that they've had no issues with their car, but everyone I know who's tested one of these has had some sort of issue. Go read Car and Driver's long-term test results. They've had issues. So you can't say that there are no issues. I've had no issues. Some of you owners out there might have no issues, but that doesn't mean there aren't issues. So. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention that it should be in the back of your mind that if you want to buy one of these, something might go wrong. Doesn't mean it will, but it might. And if you have no issues, you kiss your fingers. Because this is the sauce like mama used to make. And you grab the paddle. Oh, you grab it. You maybe grab it one more time. Oh, mm, oh. And then you go. You look at the corner in the face and you say, fuck you, corner. I punch you. I punch you hard. And I win the fight. Sassafras. Ah! Alpha's got the power. Oh! Easy boy. Whoa, Nelly. Let's put on our flashers because we're special. People are going to think this Alpha's broken down. Look, I should take this U turn. already breaking every other fucking law. Oh my God, listen to that exhaust. Shift at red line, which is somewhere in orbit. You grab the paddle. You firmly, you lick your fingers a little bit. You downshift into third. 
You stare a corner in the face and you go, fuck you, corner. Are you a cop? Are you a cop? No, you're not a cop. You hit a cop, you're going in. Let me try that again. So dumb. And that's all.